Hello, everyone, and welcome to um, our talk here uh, about bridging the gap between the physical and digital worlds. Um, my name is Shazan Mohammed. I lead product management here at Cesium, and I also have Bao Tran, who is a 3D software developer on our team and the O3DE lead. Um, quick background on Cesium. Um, so we are a visualization and analytics platform for massive 3D geospatial data. Uh, we've done a lot with open source and open standards, uh, as well as building capabilities into the cloud uh, to make uh, 3D geospatial possible for everyone and accessible to everyone. Um, we, the Cesium JS project itself uh, started in 2011, um, and since then we've open sourced it, we've built a platform on it, and now we are building an ecosystem around many more game engines um, to, to support 3D tiles and 3D geospatial. Uh, we've been incredibly successful and have tremendous momentum from uh, the community as a whole. Um, if you, with uh, you know, popular applications like NORAD Track Santa, if you use that on Christmas Eve, that is built on Cesium JS and um, we've had tremendous success uh, growing that community. So Cesium itself uh, was born in aerospace. Um, one of the first uses was to visualize satellites in space. Um, and the reason I state that here is because um, accuracy and precision, both at the ground level and in space, is incredibly important to what we do. And that means recreating digital worlds um, in a very accurate way that reflects the realism becomes important. So from there, what we saw was, over the last three to five years, was a huge increase and commoditization of how data is collected and then needs to be visualized. So everything from terrain to LIDAR-mounted cars that we see across, around the streets of Los Angeles uh, to photogrammetry meshes, being able to capture these, which creates a massive amount of data, and we're talking hundreds of terabytes globally if you, uh, if you uh, count all the commercial pro uh, capture companies. Being able to stream this across the internet to everybody becomes tremendously important. So at Cesium, we're trying to take all of that data and bring it into one platform without the need to do a ton of overhead processing on the server side, which means you can, you can mix and match the types of data that you want that serve your business needs. Um, so from an engineering point of view, Cesium has always existed at this intersection of computer graphics and geospatial. Um, we were one of the first, game, uh, first engines to adopt the WebGL standard when it was released. Um, and now we're flipping that over and bringing geospatial into game engines, allowing game engines to build real worlds with massive amounts of real world data. And all of this is possible through open standards and open source and interoperability. So just a high level overview of the Cesium platform. And the reason I, I'm showing this is because what's at the center of this and that's 3D tiles. So in, on the Cesium platform, you're able to take data from a variety of sources and stream those into a variety of game engines that serve your needs. And to make this possible, we pioneered a standard called 3D Tiles, um, which allows you to, to, to tile up all of that data and stream it into the game engines. So let's take a look at what 3D Tiles actually is. Um, so 3D Tiles is an efficient way to tile up and stream heterogeneous 3D geospatial data um, over the internet and into game engines. So we are seeing 3D geospatial data being captured in a variety of ways, whether that's point clouds, meshes, uh, procedural buildings, or uh, 3D cities and terrain and imagery that we are all familiar with. But being able to stream all of that in a efficient way that's not just efficient and fast over the wire, but also efficient and fast to render becomes incredibly important. So 3D Tiles defines a spatial index that helps you tile up your data into a form that is optimized for both of those. And it's built on GLTF. So we take all the geometry payload of 3D Tiles is stored as GLTF, 
and then we enable a lot of attribution metadata to go along with that um, as part of 3D tiles. Um, so GLTF, for those of you who are new to this community, um, it's a Kronos Group standard uh, that has been widely adopted. It's, it's seeing tremendous success. Um, and it's used to define um, all of your assets in a very efficient way that you can then read and then directly pass on to, to your game engines uh, for quick rendering and visualization. Um, so some of the things we a 3D tiles streaming engine would do are things like frustum and fork culling tiles that are not in view. So if you imagine the entire globe and 3D buildings around it, maybe you're looking at New York City as we have in the top right image, um, you only need to stream what's in your view. You don't need to stream everything else. So that's a, a concept directly derived from game engines, right? So that happens in the 3D tiles engine. You can, you can figure out what's in your view. Um, you can, you can select different levels of detail. So the detail you have up front close to the camera is going to be different from the detail you render far away in your scene. And because all of this data is streaming over the web, you can pick and choose uh, what level of quality you would like. So the quality for a high performance gaming PC may be different from a mobile phone. But the beauty of 3D tiles is that you can pick and choose uh, what your parameters are at runtime, and hence you're only using the resources, the compute resources that are available to you on the device itself. Um, so 3D tiles is at the heart of how we are getting the data, right? Um, but let's talk about how we are enabling game engines to get 3D tiles and to support 3D tiles. And that's where Cesium Native comes in. So Cesium Native is a library that we open sourced earlier this year, along with when we open sourced Cesium for Unreal. But Cesium Native by itself is a completely engine agnostic C++ library. It has a 3D tile streaming engine in there, so all the traversal, the communication, the networking, all of that is built in. It has a lightweight GLTF serialization and deserialization, because like I said before, um, all of the geometry payload is GLTF, so that becomes super important. And then all the high-precision high 3D geospatial math for creating the globes at scale and with high-precision. So we've taken Cesium Native, we launched it with Cesium for Unreal, and now we're using the same to work with O3DE. So let's look at that architecture a little bit more in detail. So what we have here is Cesium Native as a part of Cesium for O3DE. And Cesium Native itself does not directly depend on anything from O3DE or, for that matter, any other game engine. That's what makes it great. Um, but then there's the Cesium for O3DE, which is a wrapper around Native that can take things from O3DE, like the view frustums, pass it to Native, and then Native can decide which tiles to stream, what data to get, and all of that. And Bao is going to talk a lot more detail about it in the next few slides. So, so Cesium Native is allowing us to do all of that 3D tiles engine, the LOD selection, the caching, the streaming, um, all of that. And it's almost ready to use for O3D. Um, we are integrating it as a gem, so we uh, expect to open a pull request you know, in the next uh, few weeks. But the great part is, because we've done this with Unreal over the past many months, we are able to reuse all of that tech, and the path to an MVP becomes a lot quicker. So you know, a quick arrow diagram that I put out there is the first 3D tile set that we saw when we were doing Cesium for Unreal was eight months. The first 3D tile set we saw in O3D took uh, three, three months. So that's you know, twi more than twice as fast. And that's because we are just reusing most of the tech. Um, if I were to rough ballpark how much of Cesium for O3D is O3D specific code versus native code, I would probably put it at 80, 20, or 85, 15, uh, where most of the code is native. So, my last slide here before I hand it over to Bao for a technical deep dive is that 
through cesium native and through 3D tiles, we are advancing both 3D geospatial and advancing game engines. For the last three decades, both of these technologies have generally made tremendous advancements, but in parallel, they haven't really intersected. Um, and what we are doing is bringing them together so that each can take advantage of one another and then and allow both these communities to build amazing things together. So with that, I'll hand it over to Bao to do uh, the rendering part of 3D tiles. Thank you, Suzon. Um, so one of the most fundamental format of the 3D tile is the GLTF. So um, 3D tile is basically just split the whole massive 3D data into like multiple GLTF and store them in the tile set, uh, organized in the spatial hierarchy tree. And we also using the hierarchical level of detail to like select tiles at runtime. So to be able to like stream and render the 3D tiles, you need to be a uh, the engine needs to be able to render the GLTF. Uh, format at runtime. It's not possible to cook the tiles content because the data is very large. Uh, it can be uh, some data is maybe like gigabyte or even terabytes of data. And fortunately, the OCD engine like support almost all the GLTF properties. For example, like standard PBR can convert uh, support almost the GLTF materials properties and the GLTF primitive can be converted into the model access with very little pre-processing. And for the GLTF importer, uh, we also try to move most of the work in the worker thread. For example, like model access and material access are all generated in the worker thread. We also uh, we use mesh feature processor to generate the drop package in the main thread as well. And during our testing, the mesh feature processor can create RSI buffer behind the scenes, which can be quite expensive. So we find that um, if we pack in all the vertices into one single buffer, then it can improve the performance a lot for our use cases. So after you have the GLTF importer, uh, we, we move into like integrate the system native into the OCD. Um, so System native library will take care of all the tile traversing and streaming process. But on the engine side, it needs to do a couple of things. Uh, it needs to hook the GLTF uh, importer to the system native library. So the library will be able to create render resources for tiles content, both in the worker thread and in the main thread. Then, the engine needs to send the current view states to the system native library as well for the tiles cooling and selecting level of detail based on the screen space error. And then after the streaming and traversing 3D tiles process, the library will return the list of the GLTF model back to the engine so it can display into the current frame. So um, besides being able to rendering and streaming the 3D tiles, uh, we also want to have the ability to place the objects around the world. So precision is very important to us. And like most other popular engines, OCD using 32-bit floating point uh, internally. So it doesn't have uh, enough precision if you assume that the origin to be at the center of the Earth. For example, if we store the coordinate of the system office in a 32-bit floating point number, this can result in an imprecise location, which may be like a quarter meter away from the real location. And if we render the mesh uh, at that far, you may see the zeroing artifact where the, uh, the mesh like shaking around, even with the small camera uh, motion, which is quite very distracting. So our solution is that instead of placing the origin to be at the center of the Earth, we place the origin of the OCD coordinate system to be at a location near the Earth's surface. For example, here in this case, we place the, um, the OCD coordinate system to be uh, at the San Francisco uh, city. So um, you can using, so 
if we place the, uh, the coordinate system to be at the San Francisco city, you can use in any existing engine's component to build up a game level around this area. For example, you may want to like place the model of the building with the landscape of the city, or you can construct in the roads around this area. But it's just a partial solution to the whole problem. If you, um, it requires that the component have to be really close to the uh, origin. Otherwise, if you place the um, component like very far away the origin, you still have the precision problem. And there's a couple of solutions that we're considering right now. Uh, one is that you can shift the origin along with the camera so that the the component that very close to the camera will have a small coordinate value and can be represented correctly by the 32-bit floating point number. Um, components that are far away from the camera still have the precision issue uh, and sometimes the, um, the zeroing artifact. But uh, because so far away, you, those, those kind of artifacts, you're not going to notice it. But uh, shifting the origin doesn't work really well for any component that are not really aware of it. So, um, so if you want to use an existing like engine's component, it pretty much doesn't work really well with the origin shifting because the engine component is not really aware of it. Um, another solution is that you can have the level streaming. Uh, you can build in up like multiple level around the Earth and using the um, and assign different origin to each level. So in each level, you can use in like existing engine's component to building up a level. And at the runtime, when the camera is like inside the level radius, you can dynamically load the whole scenes at runtime. And when the camera outside of the level radius, you're just unloading it. So that way, it will play nicely with the physics or any engine's component. The only problem with that solution is that if you have components that like span multiple levels, then um, it may have a hard time to like decide which level to like load in it. And uh, let me show you demo how the uh, CD tiles work. So, current, so currently right now we are at the New York City area. Um, the, the data you are seeing right now is the season work terrain, which is around um, render with the bin map imagery. This data is around two terabyte and stream uh, render into the 3D tile, uh, uh, render into the OCD engine as a 3D tiles format. If I'm moving the camera around, you can see the geometry of the uh, terrain refining as the data stream to the engine. And um, in this debug field, you can see that the geometry of the terrain is split into multiple tile set and place them into the bounding volume, a uh, quark tree bounding volume hierarchy. So uh, that way, we can quickly determine which tile are visible in the current view. And because each tile has a geometric arrow, so you can use in the screen space arrow to select level of detail of the tile. So as you can see right here, tile that is close to the camera, will, um, tile that close to the camera will be rendered with the high detail. And rendered far away will render with the low detail. And sometimes it's not rendered at all, which will save a lot of IO operation and draw call for this one. So uh, let's talk about the coordinate system. Um, so currently right now, we have the coordinate system to be uh, near the New York City area. And system jams have two modes uh, for the, that coordinate system. One, one, is that, one mode is that you can have that uh, coordinate system to be fixed at that location, and it's not going to move in with the camera. So this mode works best if you want to use in any like, existing engine's component to like, place objects uh, to building up a level around the city and something like that. But it doesn't work really well. Sorry, crash. Uh, hold on. 
So, um, okay, so, so, so in this mode currently, the coordinate system uh, are fixed at that location, and uh, if you move in far away, the, the coordinate system is not moving with you. So um, it doesn't work if the component is placing far away from the origin, and you will not be able to move in from one location to, to the other due to uh, float uh, precision issue. Another mode is that you can have the, um, the coordinate system moving along with the camera. Here we are uh, moving the whole OCD coordinate system for every 10 kilometer. So objects that are close to the camera, we have a small coordinate value and can represent it correctly by the 32-bit floating point number. So. Um, so that's for the, uh, so right now we have the coordinate system moving along with us, so let's move into a different location. So uh, uh, here, what you are seeing right now is the photogrammetry of the Denver, uh, Denver City from Aerometrics. This data is captured um, up to two, milli, uh, two millimeter, and in some areas, uh, two centimeter and five centimeter resolution. The whole data set is around 22 gigabytes, so it doesn't work really well uh, if you load the whole data into the engine. So but with the 3D tiles format, we just stream the data. Uh, we stream the, the data that is matter into the current view, and I will moving around to let's show you the whole city. All right, and then uh, let's move to a different location. So uh, what you are currently seeing right now is the San Francisco phot uh, photogrammetry. This data is also captured uh, up to two centimeters and five centimeters resolution. Uh, and it's also from Aerometrics. This data is also around 22 or 23 gigabyte. And with the uh, origin, um, when you have the coordinate system moving around with you, you can pretty much move in anywhere from the Earth if you want to. So that's for the uh, demo. So, uh, so what next? Uh, we are on in the progress of integrating the Cism Ion into the OCD engine. Cism Ion will convert in the EL access pipeline, which will, that, which will convert the massive 3D data into the 3D tiles, and it's also allow uh, the engine. Uh, it's also stream the 3D tiles into the engine as well. We are also working on the editor component for our gem so, so that people can take full advantage of it. On the GLTF uh, side, we also want to support KTX to super uh, texture compression and mesh up to reduce the GPU memory and also faster streaming as well. Uh, 3D tiles also support the metadata, uh, so you will be, um, so we want to so with those metadata, you will be able to see the properties of the building or visual, uh, visual the high map of the, of the 3D data content as well. Point clouds is also in the roadmap as currently. Thank you for attending. <laughs>